Colleen. And we're the Cousins Weird. Hi, we're together. We're live. It's so much fun. We haven't and done this in like a month. It's been this over is a great. Month. We're yeah. having, now we remember why we like this. Because we like to be in the same room when we do our... We do. It's, it's so, much, so much more fun. And I have a gross trend. And <laughs> there's just... I'm just going to get into it because... Great. You can't hold back with these. She likes time. to traumatize me. I'm talking today about actually the thing that I discovered about I had to do this first because it's in the same vein, you know? Right. But it's anthropodermic bibliopegy. Do you have any idea what that is? Anthro well, po. Po. Anthropo as anthropo. Anthropology, Post, which is human. Okay. Dermic skin. Yes. Human Biblio, skin. bibliopegy. Think Bible. Books, binding. Okay. Human skin, skin binding. Bible. Bi- binding, binding books with human skin. Yes, it was a thing that was done. Yes. Did they not know that they were like cows and stuff? They, they oh, did. they did, oh. and the people that did it were something. This is a practice of binding books in human skin, no. and it has been in practice since the 17th century, probably before that, because I'm sure there were people back in the Dark Ages that were doing weird shit. But you lost two people. See what you do. I know with it's your terrible grossness. with my with my hideous things. Yes, my hideous things. Um, most of these type of books that we have are dated to. The 19th century, we're talking 1800s. 1800s! That's 1800s. really not that long ago. No. Right? No. Some famous examples of this type of book, right? Okay. One book called The Highwayman, a narrative of the life of James Allen, alias George Walton. Okay. This book is a deathbed confession made by James Allen. He was in prison, and he made this confession to the warden of the Massachusetts State Prison in 1837, Mm -hmm. which he asked for a copy of his confession to be bound in his own skin after he died. Yes. And he wanted... What a weirdo. He wanted one (laughs) one copy of this book to be given to a man he tried to rob, but admired his bravery. And another to be given to his doctor. How do you repay the person that you admire? Is you give, you them give them a book, a of book your made skin. of your skin? That's perfect. It's yes. so awful. I'm like, no, thanks. You can keep it. I'm Please good. don't admire me. <laughs> Please, Please don't. No. <laughs> and when he died, they removed the skin off his back, gave it to a tanner, and made leather to bind two books from his back skin. He gave him the skin on my his back. back skin. My back hey, skin. Hey, 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 you. Take my back skin. I could get book. at least half a dozen books out I of my back skin. If, if they were regular size, yeah. you know. I get a lot of books. But I don't want, I don't want that. I don't want that to be my legacy. No. This book about me, made from me. No. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> Yikes. No, can you imagine what it looks like? Yeah. That's her pictures. Yeah, I sent you some oh, pictures. Good. Can't wait to there see There were a few executed criminals who became leather for books. They like to, they, we know the history of this country and Britain and Europe. They like to do lots of weird stuff with criminals when they kill them. Yeah. So this is one we're talking, the first few people we talk about are from England. Okay. First one was John Horwood. He was an 18, <laughs> 18-year-old son of a minor, and he hanged Horwood. for murder in Bristol, England in 1821. I, I just want to give you a little backstory about good old John here. He was 18, which you're like, oh, he's so young. He stalked and tormented a girl who was his former girlfriend, same age as him, from the same village. And Don't eventually, like already. he threw a rock at her that hit her in the head and fractured her skull. Hate him. Which she originally had to go to the doctor. She had to walk 10 miles to get to the nearest hospital, and she did it daily. Until the point where a doctor by the name of Richard Smith saw her and said, you need to stay here. And eventually they did a trepanning, which is they drilled a hole that she had. And they had had an abscess in there. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. What this guy said, this guy, this kid said, well, it wasn't the rock that did it. It was the fact that she had dirty bandages on it. I'm like, "Um, no, dude. Uh, it doesn't matter. Ba- the bandages wouldn't be have, there. They didn't clean the wound right, and that's why the abscess happened. The bandages wouldn't be there if you didn't throw a rock at her head. Right. Terrible. Terrible. So anyway, she ended up dying, and 
after he was hanged for yeah. his murder, his body was given to Dr. Smith because, you know, that's what every doctor wants. Like, oh, I treated this girl, so give me the body of the guy that killed that her, killed. right? Yeah. And the body was dissected during a public lecture at the the Bristol Royal Infirmary, because that's what they did in well, the yeah. 1800s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You... They, were, they were head of the observatory well, kind of thing. That's, that's, they wanted to look at the brain and say, oh, let's see where the criminality happened in the brain. Oh, right, right, right. But his skin was removed prior to this, and that's what they usually do. Okay. And usually they would incinerate the skin. Not this time. This guy had a better idea. He's like, oh, no, no, no. Wouldn't it be a great idea to have it tanned and use it to leather? To bind all the documents and papers from the murder and the trial and execution. We'll make a book from this guy. Oh, about, good. About his horrible deeds and we'll bind it in his own skin. Yay, you know, let's do that. There is a display in Bristol at the M Shed Museum. And it's the front of the, it's the book made from him. <laughs> Not about him. <laughs> it is about him, though. Oh, yeah. It's about him but it's and made, made of him. And made of him. Okay. And the front of the book has on it an embossing of a gallows, because, you know, he was hanged. And I a skull any... and crossbones with the following words. The true, it, the words were written in Latin, but I didn't write the Latin words because I was running out. And this is getting to be a little bit long. Um, and in Latin, it says, the true skin of John Horwood. William, like, the true skin of John Horwood. You know. Yeah. Lovely. Um. Because, you know, they need to make sure people know that this is true this skin. skin. Yeah. William Corder, this is also in England, he was convicted in 1828 of murdering his lover, Maria Martin. He shot her, because, you know. Men can be this, assholes. This murder is known as the Red Barn murder, and there was, like, an old movie made about it. So it's, like, like a famous thing that happened, like, okay. the actual story of the murder. He was hung. And after an hour, he was cut down, taken to the courtroom at the Shire Hall, where he was convicted of mm -hmm. this crime. Mm -hmm. And they slit open his abdomen to expose his muscles. And then they just left him there for roughly 5,000 people to view him. Oh, good. Because, you know, that's what you want to do. Sign me up. No, thanks. He was later dissected in front of Cambridge students because, you know, that's what they... Well, yeah, you did that. Yep. That makes sense. That's how you learn. And it was also most likely used to experiment with galvanism because they were seen bringing a big battery in there. Yes. Or a generator, whatever it was Something. they used to make galvanic current back then in the 1800s. And his skin was also tanned at the request of the surgeon, George Creed, and the leather used to bind an account of the murder because they like to do that. Let's write a story of Ugh. what this man did and we're going to bind it in him. With him. It's just... Talk about morbid. <laughs> it really is. It's like, okay. Next I'm talking about, and this is a famous English murder duo, right? William Burke, who with a partner named... William Hare, because William William was a popular name, so Burke and Hare, Burke and Hare. committed 16 murders over a 10-month period in 1828 in Edinburgh, Scotland. So I'm sorry, it wasn't England, Scotland. Oh. They're my and people. basically, the they killed people to sell their corpses to Robert Knox for dissection and anatomy lessons. That was and It common. was cheaper for them and easier to kill people. Yeah. Most of them were homeless or poor people, or that was a they had... Thing mental problems. If you want to hear about what these two men did, the whole story, go look up last podcast on the left because they did an episode on Burke and Hare and it was amazing and I recommend it. Because when I was doing this research, I'm like, hey, I know this story. How do I know this story? And I'm like, oh yeah, last podcast on the left. It was good. But anyway, Hare ended up testifying against Burke and was given immunity. So he got to waltz away. And they were basically accused with their wives. These two men had wives that were, they were all four of them, because they were all part of it. Oh, okay. They all knew about it, but the only one who suffered for it was Burke. He is the one who got condemned and hanged. Why? Only him. The other ones, they testified against him. They said, oh, no, it was, Hare goes, no, it was him. And then Burke goes, oh, no, it was all Hare, but because Hare was the first to talk. But honestly, a lot of these people. His own wife said it was him? I don't think, I think she denied it, but they let her go because she's a woman. Oh. Well, she didn't have, I didn't have a choice. He made me, you know, it was one of those. Sometimes it works in your favor. Um, but it's one of those, like, uh, they didn't get convicted, but the people didn't really like them. So they, they, they tried to, probably they tried to like 
lynch them and they had to run and hide in the police station. <laughs> like, I'm gonna go police. <laughs> Bye. But Burke was hanged in January of 1829 in front of about 25,000 people came to watch. Wow. I mean, but you think about it. They were mad. There were multiple murders. There were serial, serial killers. killers. You know, and obviously they're, they're serial killers for profit, but... It doesn't matter. Yeah. Killing you multiple should, people. Honestly, the story is, is like fascinating. You should go and look up last podcast and listen to it. It's really good. On February 1st, his corpse was publicly dissected by a professor, Monroe. There was a student riot during this dissection because there were only like 50 tickets sold to it to the students and the students that didn't get in were angry. So they started a little riot going on during this so that what they did, they had to change the policy. And after the dissection, they had to allow the other students to walk through to view the corpse afterwards. It's like, what is wrong with you people? There's no true crime documentaries then. So they had to like, they, well, yeah, that's true. That's you know? true. That's true. I don't I think mean... I'd want to see a dissected human laying on a slab. Yeah, no, yeah. that's not my thing. But, you know, some people it is, whatever. And they yeah. always wanted to study the brain and say, oh, this area of the, the malevolent area of the brain is, like, you know, highly act. I know, let's, I can't believe they're not letting us see the dissection. It's, un, it's unfair. Love the show. Huge fan. Give me some merch. <laughs> You're a turd. That's my child. And he's been telling me to bring something from my mom's house to him on my live and it's like, love this show, huge fan. Okay, so oh, sorry. this guy was a murdering piece of shit. You know, he didn't yes. do other humans. But I will say this professor dissected it wasn't much better. It was said that during the dissection, the professor took okay. his, a, one of his quills for writing, dipped it in Burke's blood, and wrote, This is written in the blood of Willem Burke, who was hanged in Edinburgh. This blood was taken from his head. Because, you know, psychopathy, psychopath. So the doctor, mm, you need to keep a watch on that guy. Because he's into yuck. something. <laughs> honestly, this guy killed people to sell their bodies for dissection. And that's what ended up happening to him at the end. I think that was kind of just Oh, justice isn't that there. ironic? Yeah. Should have been. Don't you think? Um, his death mask and the notebook bound from his skin can be seen at the Surgeon's Hall Museum in Edinburgh. So that's good. Oh, let me sign up for that too. Yeah. Also, there are three editions of Holbein's book called Dance of Death that are bound in human skin. And they're from the 19th century. And they've actually been verified of, like they tested them and they actually are made from skin. There have been a lot of books that say they're bound in skin and they found out they're like sheep or pig or something. They're not human, even though they say they are. Um, the National Library of Australia has a book of poetry from the 19th century that's also confirmed to be human skin. Because who doesn't want to read poetry from a book? How romantic. Yes. <laughs> Let's read this poetry and hold a dead person's skin while we do it. Because fun. Um, it states in the book's inscription on the first page, bound in human skin. Because, you know, Just in people case you really want to know that. How gross. People are fucked up. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm, there mm -hmm. are even some anatomy textbooks they found that were bound in the skin of cadavers that use, they use to make the books. So they, like, use their bodies to draw the pictures from anatomy, and then they use their skin to bind the book of the drawings of them dead. I don't, for some reason, I like that. <laughs> It, it almost does. It's like, here, almost use my body sense. for science, and you can yeah. use the all of I it. I mean, you know. I don't want to touch it. Out of the 50 books that are displayed around the world that claim to be anthropodermic bibliopegy, and it's a mouthful of title. I usually just say human skin. Um, I'm going to call you that from now on. <laughs> bibliopegy. <laughs> yeah. 31 have been examined by the Anthropodermic Book Project. 18 have been confirmed to be human skin, and 13 are proven to be animal. And you know how they do this. And look at Anthony just said some were pig skin. It is so mm -hmm. similar. You're right. Um, testing to see if they're real is tricky because the books have been handled by a lot of people and your DNA can oh, rub transfer. off. Um, and DNA can also be destroyed by the tanning process. So okay. you don't know if you're getting actual cells from the skin or from people that have touched the books. Mm -hmm. Um, 
The way they're tested is by peptide mass fingerprinting, which is PMF, and mm. matrix-assisted laser desorption slash ionization, which is MALD. Okay. And basically, tiny samples are taken from the bindings, and using a mass spectroscopy machine, the collagen proteins are analyzed, and they're basically identified as primate collagen. Okay. And because nobody ever bound skin with monkey skin, monkey, obviously because it's hard to find, but right. they didn't have lots of monkeys running around. The, they were like, and the hair follicles. Right. They said they used to just test for hair follicles, but because in the tanning process, the skin stretched and it's hard it's to hard tell to if it's like, you know, if stretched it's stretched out or if it's right for the, yeah. the pores and the follicles and stuff. Ooh, ooh. Yeah. Excuse me, the heebie jeebies. The library at Harvard University claimed to have three books made of human skin binding, but only one was actually confirmed to be real skin. Interesting. So now we're getting to the original story that I found. Okay. That I needed to do this preface first. In 1878, this is a North American story that happened in the Wild West. Um, it wasn't too wild in 1870. It was wild enough. There was an outlaw, like a highwayman, by the name of Big Nose George Parrot. He had a lot of aliases, but he had a huge nose. And I, I sent a picture of him, and he had... The, last, the fact that his last name was Parrot was very fitting. He That's was hysterical. Like yeah. With his gang, he m- murdered two lawmen in Wyoming, and they were trying to escape from a failed train robbery when they accidentally killed these... They didn't accidentally... They did it. You know? mm-hmm. They killed these two lawmen that were protecting the train. They were eventually captured in 1888, so they were on the lam for a few years. <clears throat> in Montana, they were found and captured. Big Nose <laughs> was sentenced to hang. He also attempted to escape jail, which enraged the local people. And they're like, oh no, 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 no. This dude is not getting away, because escaping was not really all that hard, because I mean, the jails weren't really all that great. Yeah. Cool. 200 of these enraged locals formed up a lynch mob, right? They kidnapped at gunpoint Big Nose, Big nose from the jail, and they hung them themselves from a telegram, oh a telegraph God. pole. Duh. They strung them up, right? They strung up the Big Nose. And the doctors, Thomas McGee and John Eugene Osborne, Thomas McGee. Oh, they oh, took McGee. his corpse to study his brain for signs of criminality. Right, you know? yeah, I gotta see what's going on up there. And th- what they is said they did, and there's proof because they have his skull and stuff, they cut, they hacked off the top of his skull, crudely, and they gave it to a 15-year-old girl, and I did not write her name down. She turned out to be the first female doctor in Wyoming. And she used the top of this guy's skull as an ashtray in her office, which, yeah, fun. Fun times. They also removed okay. the skin from his thighs, chest, face, and his nipples, because you need those, right? When you're removing skin, you got to get those, too. Get the nips. <laughs> they sent them to a tannery in Denver. His where nipples? All the skin and all oh, his, his not, nipples, too. Not just his nipples. Oh. They made them into a medical bag. And a pair of shoes, which Dr. Osborne, John Eugene Osborne, got voted as governor of Wyoming. And guess what he wore to his inauguration? Big old, big nose, big old, big shoes. noses shoes. Shoes made from big old, big nose. Where do the nipples end up, though? I don't know if they're apart. Part of the shoe, they part mentioned of the bag. it in the article, but they didn't say where they went. Were there nipples on the side of the bag? <laughs> Were they on the toes of the shoes? On the toes of the shoes. No, there's pictures of the shoes. They're on display. Oh. And a picture of his his death mask. And a lot of these have the death mask. Like, they have, like, a cast of the death yes. mask along with the bound skin leather. So so you get to see what the person looked like that skin made was. the oh, good. leather. I'm which is, real thrilled with that. Yeah. But, yeah, the shoes are, like, you're looking at them and you're like, oh, those are made from a dude. And the, wait, so... The, what was he in my own? What did you say? He was the governor. At his inauguration, because he got elected governor of Wyoming, at his inauguration, he wore his John, what years? His George Parrott shoes. It was in either the late 1800s or the early 1900s, but it's, he actually, That's I sick. checked, I checked, I double checked it. He totally wore those shoes. That's his psychopath behavior right well, there. Well, he's a politician, so it kind of goes with the territory. Oh, yeah. 
the politicians are all kind of psychopathic. People are freaking weird. Why would you wear human man shoes? Man shoes. With but nipples yeah. on the toes. <laughs> I saw a picture of the shoes. The, they I didn't, the nipples they didn't the show the medical bag, and that's probably where the nips ended up. They're like on the side, like a, like a like a rivet. Yeah, but they're nips. The nipple rivet, like a snap. I keep doing this, like it's <laughs> like a snap, nip snap. They poke them for good luck. Oh God, <laughs> it's like I can't. I need to think of like, <laughs> nips. <laughs> Maybe they were at, like. Maybe they were a little pointy, so you could hang things off them. Oh, you could God. make a little key. You could make a little key. <laughs> What's wrong with me? Key hook. Like key hook. Purse. Okay. You hang it on your wall. Some nips, so you could hang your keys <laughs> off them. <laughs> the fact that with his nipples, I'm like, of course, with his nipples. Yes, you can't forget the nipples. You can't Don't leave unless the you're a, unless you're a bog body and they cut them off. Decorative nipples. Yes. Was it Ed Gein made this nipple belt? Me. Was it Ed Gein? Probably. It was Ed Gein. Mm-hmm. Out of the he, women he dug up that were dead. And he made nipple belts. Out. It's not as funny when we talk about Ed Gein no. doing it. Though. He was a damaged man. He was awful. Whew. He had definitely had an Oedipus complex. Yeah. So that was great, Margaret. Thank yes. you for that. I thought you would enjoy that one. I, had to... I haven't been grossed out in a while, so <laughs> I appreciate you keeping your... Next time you pick up a beautiful leather-bound book, you'll never think of it in the same way. No. I'll be looking for the nipples. <laughs> Checking the binding. Where's the nipples? Where's the nipples? Are there nipples? There's no exactly. nipples. It can't be person. It could be cow nipples or pig nipples on it. I think I can tell the difference. <laughs> Which would a cow and a person nip? Oh, for sure. <laughs> you never see even like cow nips on things. Wait, wait, wait. Okay. Well, cows have udders. I was going to say. But Do cow has have nipples? I thought they had udders. What's that's happening? What that's what it's a bit long nipple. I know, but would you have a big but, long udder hanging off your Even coat? a pig. A pig would too. Like pigs have rows. You're gonna have a big long udder hanging off the back of your coat. <laughs> the handle. Let's tan that puppy. Oh, we love your purse. The handle is so original. Oh yes, the udder. <laughs> The, the jumping Frenchman. <laughs> Possible topic. The jumping Frenchman. Oh, I'll have to look that up. Look cool. We always like new things. That yes. Interesting. Because, you know, it, not every story can be about books bound with human skin and shoes made from people. Oh, it's wrong. Like, why would you do it? And it's not like it was like a long time ago. And it really know, wasn't that long ago. Like these were murderers for the most part. So you're like. I don't really, you don't want to feel bad, but you feel gross. It's gross. It's still gross. It's I don't like care. Somebody made the effort to do that. And it's like, you know, we you're kind of messed up. You're not, especially the shoe thing. That's like, yeah. Like a Fashion. book is something, but shoes are something you would wear all day. And With you your foot around. inside, I, big nose. I, I wonder if his nose made the shoe. One, one <laughs> shoe. <laughs> so I don't. This is nose. Just go on our Instagram and Facebook to see <laughs> pictures of all these horrible people <laughs> that were made into books. Because mm-hmm. you know, well, at least they were bad people. I mean, some I don't... of them, I some of the criminals were, but you know, as long as they actually were guilty. True. It's half the time people weren't. Oh. They just accused everyone. That's what it was like the 18 year old. But then I, when I heard what he did and I'm like, multiple people said, and she even said he hit me and that this guy threw a rock at my head and she complained about him, like of harassing her. Yeah. And, Cause he kept asking her to marry him and she kept saying no. She's like, no dude, I don't want to marry you. Mm-hmm. And now he's a book. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> That's what you get. That's what you get. Don't harass women. You'd be turning into a book. It's a book I don't intend to read. Not in his skin. <laughs> no. That would make me want to vomit the whole time. You're like, mm. no, thank you. I'll pass. Yeah, I don't want that dude's shoes either. Yeah. They're in the, I shared the pictures. I don't want to see yeah. that right now. You do. No, I don't. Do you? Don't. Do you go? My phone's up there anyway. I can't see it. Oh, you can't? No. Well, anyway, follow us on Facebook and Instagram so you can see the lovely pictures of man books and man shoes. And then, um, we have our pictures from our episodes on there and our episodes are shared on there and you should share episodes and we post them to your friends. Uh, yeah. If you want to reach out to us, you can suggest topics or just say, Hey, checked you out. 
Hey, you two are so cool. Yeah. You can send us an email at thecousinsweird at gmail.com or you can, what did it say? It did, we got our first, we got a Patreon. <gasps> Guess who it is? Who is it? Griffin. Oh, my Griffy. Your just, sweet Griffy. He's a freaking friend. Oh, yay. And look, Joe, I saw a new Patreon. Aw, what a good son. Can't get my husband to join, but it's kind of like second time with my husband. Well. Yay! Yay! We love you. We, you're gonna get bonus episodes. <laughs> Woo-hoo. You're gonna get to do a Skype chat with your mother. <laughs> oh wait, no, he didn't do five dollars a month. Yeah, you can't get a Skype chat. But I'll anyway, come and see you though. You can um, send us a direct message through Instagram or Facebook. I got all excited. About the I know. <laughs> <laughs> <We're>... <laughs> <Woo-hoo>! <laughs> Does it take much to get us excited? No. What are we doing? Oh, yeah. If you want to pay, be a patron also, for a dollar a month, become a freaky friend, and you get um, at, uh, at bonus a free episodes. sticker and bonus episodes, Griffin. Lucky you. Yay. And for f- your freaky friend. And for $5 a month, you get the same as a freaky friend, but you're a terrible trender, and you also get a yearly gift, uh, ad-free episodes, and um, uh, a monthly Skype chat with us and other patrons. Yay. Oh. Yay. I think, I think that's, all. that's a wrap. Stay freaky. Bye. Bye.